Okay, so in the last session we looked at these various accounts or these buckets of accounts that uh, uh, need to be created under these various categories of assets, liabilities, equity, revenue, and expenses. Uh, the next step is we're going to look at how do we increase amounts in each of these buckets, uh, whether they're asset accounts or liability, equity, revenue, or expense accounts. How do we increase or decrease what's in those buckets so that we can properly measure everything and make sure that at the end of the day everything balances. So as you know, uh, the, there's the equation, uh, what we call the balance sheet equation, which says that assets must equal to liabilities, or what we owe, plus the equity or the value in the business. Um, and we also know that the revenues and expenses, uh, which result in uh, profit or loss, for the business, um, eventually flow and do impact uh, the value, the equity. So at the end of the day, everything must balance. So assets must balance to the liabilities and equity, and equity um, is a function of what was invested initially, as well as uh, the revenues and expenses. In order for everything to balance correctly, we need to have a system whereby um, we can record things that affect both sides of the equation and not one side, and this is what's known as uh, double entry accounting and we'll see that at a later stage uh, when we start creating what we call journal entries uh, but just keep in mind that this is known as double entry accounting and we need to have two sides to the coin if, if everything is to balance at the end of the day in the last session we did talk about having different accounts or buckets of accounts under each of these categories so um, just at a high level again we have uh, an assets bucket account that has various assets in it such as cash, um, accounts receivable. There's, there are various buckets for all the liabilities accounts. Um, there, there, there are similarly various buckets for the equity accounts, such as capital and retained earnings. Um, and then there's going to be buckets for revenue and expenses. And as I mentioned, um, when, whenever we do journal entries, which we'll look at later, um, it has to impact uh, two sides in order for everything to balance correctly. Uh, but we need to figure out how wh what we mean by increasing and decreasing amounts in the buckets. And this is where you need to know about debits and credits. Uh, so we have things called debits, and we have things called credits. Now, in the regular world, you probably think of credits as things as increasing uh, an item. So if you look at your bank statement, a credit to your bank account is normally considered an increase to your, your bank statement, uh, whereas a debit to your bank account uh, is, a, is a decrease in your bank statement. Um, however, that doesn't uh, apply in this particular case. Uh, in fact, from an assets perspective, when things are added to the bucket or increase the amount in, the, in, in an asset account, we call that a debit, and we abbreviate it with this DR. And when things come out of the assets or decrease it, um, they are credits. So here it's a plus and a minus. Um, Similarly, on the liability side, now, it's actually the opposite. When things are increasing the liability, it's a credit. And when they're decreasing the liability, or uh, when it comes out of, out of a liability, it's a debit. So it's the exact opposite of the asset. Um, and this is important so that everything then balances at the end of the day. Uh, so again, this is if we're removing a liability or if we're increasing it, it's a credit. Uh, similarly, with the equity, it's exactly the same like the liability. So again, if the equity account is being increased, it's a credit. And an equi if an equity account is being decreased, where amounts are going out, it's a debit. Now going back to the example of the bank statement, if you think about it, from the bank's perspective, um, we are actually a liability for them. So if we deposit money to the bank, they owe us money back, that deposit, and so that's why it's recorded as a credit, because from their perspective, they owe us the deposit amount, and that's why on a bank statement, it's a credit. And if we withdraw funds, it reduces the bank's liability, so it's a debit, and that's why on bank statements, you have debits and credits in that manner. But when we're looking at it from our own perspective, um, it's the opposite, and so when we increase our own liability, it's a credit. When we decrease it, it's a debit. But from an asset perspective, and cash in our bank statement is our asset, we increase our asset by debiting it, and we decrease it by crediting it. Now, if we turn over to the income statement side, 
And remember, we, we mentioned that the revenues and expenses are essentially a component of this equity uh, because they, they impact the value of, the bit of what's in the company. Then, from that standpoint, revenues are very similar to equity in that increasing a revenue, which would also result in an increase in equity, um, means that we to increase it, we would credit revenues, and decreasing it means a debit. And similarly, on the expense side, it's now the opposite of revenues because it has uh, an inverse impact on the equities, meaning that um, an increase of an expense is a debit, similar to the asset, and a decrease in expense would be a credit to the expense account. So that's how we basically increase and decrease our uh, various buckets under each of these categories. And I'll just go ahead and put it the signs for each one so that it's easy for you to see. And in fact, going back and looking at assets, we, we defined assets as being economic benefits um, uh, to a company. Those are assets. Um, there are some assets that over time, so for example, if you think about uh, equipment or if you have a car, uh, there's something called depreciation, which basically means that over time, the uh, economic benefit of that item is used up. So in the case of, say, a computer or a car, uh, you may depreciate it over, say, a period of five years. And what happens is that every year we take a portion of that asset and we expense it. And that's why assets and expenses have the same signs uh, with debits and credits. So if you keep this picture in mind, it'll allow you to better understand how to increase and decrease these various accounts that fall under each of these categories. And it'll be useful when we're actually going ahead and creating the journal, journal entries at uh, the next uh, step of the process. Thanks for watching.